Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Yeah, hi, Aura. How are you? I'm good, thank you. All right. Well, I'm glad to see everyone uh, today. Um, everyone is back. You know, I, I see at least eight people. Um, Glad to see everyone back. Welcome back. And um, uh, let me quickly check how many are in the uh, in the forum. Okay, I have uh, I have eight. I have eight people and eight people matching number. That's wonderful. That's great. So. Um, so today we are moving on to the next topic, uh, a future uh, present value of annuities. Now think about it. If there is a future value of annuity, there must be present value of annuity. And the present value of annuities would be um, I, I would just show you the model, right? Um, in this, uh, in this slide, you have three diagrams, but actually it's just two. One is, um, one is the first one is uh, present value of uh, annuity due, and this uh, the other two are any ordinary annuity present value of ordinary annuities. Um, now some people some people find it hard to distinguish between future value of annuity and present value of annuity. Uh, but if you think about it, <clears throat> annuities are always in the future. Right? Annuity payments are in the future. Annuity deposit or payments are in the future. It's not in the present. I mean, if it is in the present, then it's it's, it's not annuity. It's just if it is in the present, uh, it's just single cash flow model, right? But think about it. Annuities are reg payments of regular amount at regular interval, right? So it is something to happen, right? It's not what happened in the past. I mean, what happened in, in the past? is of no consequence to us. What happened in the past, we're not interested in what happened in the past because in the uh, in finance, think about it, uh, it's always what uh, the cash flow that's going to be in the future. We want the present value of it or uh, what you have at time zero at the present and how it's going to grow in the future, right? So think about it, all these annuity payments are in the future. But then that doesn't make it future value of annuities, right? Because what we are interested in is what is the present value of all those annuity payments? I'm even projecting my voice. It's it's as if my lungs have run out of air, or it's being you know uh, uh, my diaphragm has no no more strength, so it cannot force any air out of my lungs, or as if my uh, heart is being, you know, uh, there was, you know, uh, pressure in my heart. <laughs> uh, uh, that that's making it hard to uh, uh, project voice, or project air out of my lungs.
So now think about it. If we can compare that with the diagram of the uh, future value of annuity. And in the future value of annuity, still, you know, all the payments are in the future, right? All the payments are in the future. At the end of time one, end of time two, three, four, five. And we want the future value of all of those in the future, right? There is only uh, and the, uh, the last payment is literally, that's in the, uh, literally in the future, you know, at, at maturity. And if it is annually due, only one payment is in the present, right? The payment at time zero. Uh, in case of present value of annuities, <coughs> we want to find the present value of all of them. And all the payments are in the future. We, we want the uh, present values. In annuity due, only one payment is at time zero. It's already in the present. So it doesn't get discounted. Doesn't need to get discounted. Just like the uh, last payment in the uh, future value of annuity, ordinary annuity, right? Uh, the last payment is at maturity. So it doesn't get compounded, right? So when we, uh, so this is the diagram, but you understand this is only a very extremely simplified version, right? Because in reality, in reality, uh, nothing is, in reality, nothing is this simple. I mean, timeline is not like just five years. Timeline can be like, you know, 30 years, and the payment can be monthly. And if the payment is monthly, then the timeline will have 360, 360 uh, points or 360 notches, right? 360 payments. And finding the present value of that won't be, cannot be done this way. So how do we do, how do we do it? we have to have the reduced form formula. And this is the reduced form formula. And here, um, one example, a very good example is, um, think about it. all the loans, if you take out a loan, if you take out a loan, all the loans are basically um, are paid in uh, annuities. All the right, isn't it right? I said this before, um, because no lender. Suppose you took out a thirty-year loan, mortgage, right? What kind of bank waits thirty years for you to come up with the uh, in, uh, the full lump sum future value? There's no lender, right? There's no lender that does that. So there's no way you can, you know, uh, uh, borrow money, take out a loan, and you know, uh, uh, ask ask the uh, or expect the uh, the lender to wait 30 years for, right? Um, so when you borrow money, right, uh, the payment starts already the next month, right? In installments, most of the times monthly installment in monthly. So here, uh, let's take a look at these examples. First, uh, one, uh, two examples, right? Uh, the second example is exactly the case of taking out a loan. First example, you won $10 million lottery. You have two options. Okay, it's not this two, it must be TWO. One, one option, one option number one, take the lump sum cash payout, lump sum cash payout. Uh, option number two, uh, take annuities. Okay, so if you take annuities, then uh, Uh, 
our question uh, our question is you know before before making a decision that what's the decision criteria i mean which one is better which one is better now if you take lump sum cash payout then It will be around uh, six, 60 percent of the uh, prize money, right? Why? Uh, they will take out at top top maximum tax rate, and the top tax rate is currently thirty nine percent. So they will take out that's almost forty percent. They will take out about forty percent, and you will get sixty uh, six million net, right? You will receive six million net. But if you uh, choose annuities, uh, they will pay it out over 29 years, 29 years. So 29 years is roughly 30. So let's say 30, 30 years. And I, um, they will pay out, let's say they will pay out in monthly payment. Monthly, they will pay out 20,000, let's say, 20K. I don't know if they will pay out in monthly or quarterly or annually. I don't know. Uh, I've never won the lottery, so <laughs> I haven't looked into that. But if it is monthly, it's not a bad deal. It doesn't. It, it's not a bad deal. Every month you get 20k. That's already good, right? That's already more than you know. That's good enough. 20k every month. Um, That already puts you into, uh, I mean, annually, uh, that's going to be uh, 240K. That's like top 2%, top 2% of the population. If you're making more than, you know, 200K a year, that's almost like, you know, top 2% uh, of the population. You might say, oh, it's only top 2 Look, in the U.S., the population is about 300 million, 300 million. 1% is already 3 million, right? 2%, 6 million. At least, at least, you know, uh, uh, it would be more than, uh, uh, slightly more than 6 million because, you know, uh, uh, actual population of the U.S. is, you know, um, more than 3 million, right? It's just, you know, roughly 3 million, but, you know, But it's really, you know, uh, 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 it's still very, you know, uh, tough. It's a long road to get into the top 2%, right? It's a long road. But anyway, um, then the question, once again, uh, what say you? Which one do you choose, right? Do you take lump sum or do you take the annuities? Then... Here's what my thing. Okay, is that is that um, uh, so? We need to compare which one is greater. And you might some some people might just think uh, think, oh, so um, I'm getting 20k for next 30 years. That every month, so that's going to be 360 months. So 20K times 360, that's 7.2 million. Oh, so this is better, right? Annuity is better. If you if you say so, uh, you, you don't think very hard. You didn't think very hard. Why? First of all, that 7.2 million doesn't exist at any single point in time. Isn't that right? It's only a, uh, just a sum of, just, you know, a simple sum, simple aggregate of all those uh, 20 Ks, 360 of them spread over 30 years. So it's not any lump sum that exists at a single point in time. So you cannot simply uh, uh, compare that with 
six million because six million is six million dollars today six million is already in the present value six million is six million in today's uh, dollars at time zero right whereas 7.2 million is just a simple aggregate of uh, <clears throat> that doesn't exist in uh, any single point in time so then how do you compare it well there's one way only one way we can compare it uh, because six million is already in today's dollars it's already in present value and then you know all these you know, seven uh, there's no 7.2 million in, in a single point but it's 20 k's all to be paid in the future first starts at you know at the end of this month at the end of next month and so on and on and on they are all in the future cash flows in the future right all future cash flows so what you can do is you discount all these future cash flows to present in other words you can simply extend this model to uh, this timeline you can extend this timeline to 30 years with you know uh, uh, in monthly monthly right in monthly notches every month so there will be 316 so <clears throat> in other words you find the present value is all over. again you can't do it this way because th there's too many right so what do you do we'll have to use this formula and then the question is whichever wins out whichever has greater present value and that's the one that's the one that wins out okay that's the one to uh, choose so let's take uh, let's do the example so here we have I want you to open this file I mean when this class starts you must have this file already open all the Excel files that go with together with all the Excel files that go together right all the Excel files that go together with our lecture you must have it open so does everyone have this file open in front of you does everyone have this file hmm? I don't even have to uh, ask this because that's a common sense you have to have it open uh, yeah all right you have it open good uh, Angel are you, Angel do you have this file in front of you Brian good uh, Angel, are you there? Antonio, do you have this file in front of you? Antonio? Mm -hmm. Okay, Tristan said yes. Yosahani said yes. Well, some people haven't replied. Chris, are you there, Chris? Jacob, are you there, Jacob? Do you have this file in front of you, Chris? Good. Jacob. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Good, good, good. Jason, do you have this file in front of you, Jason? Khalid, Khalid, are you there, Khalid? Do you have this file, Khalid? Okay, good. Uh, Keisha, are you there, Keisha? Do you have this file in front of you? At least, you know, seven people replied. Uh, yeah, okay, good. Um, So, um, oops, I'm having a. And then uh, this highlighted cells, you must have these highlighted cells empty, right? It, it should be all deleted, right? It should have it blank. And once it is blank, now look at row 17. This row 17 is exactly our problem, it's our example. Row 17 is exactly like our example. <clears throat> Why? Payment is 20K, APR 6%, timeline 30 years to maturity, and the compounding frequency is monthly. In other words, it's monthly payment, monthly payment. And first, what we need to do? Oh, well, must, we must find first the periodic rate, which is, we know it's going to be 0.5%. And then <clears throat> we must find also how many compoundings actually have of course 360 number of 360 payments right actual number then uh using this formula right 
using this formula. And I will explain to you how this formula was derived, right, in the next class, but we don't have time for that right now. So we'll talk about we'll just use the so it's payment over R minus payment over open parenthesis R times one plus R raised to and then close parenthesis. The close. Don't forget to open and close, right? If you once you open, you must close. And then hit enter, and voila, there you have it. But then this is this is not the conclusion. This isn't the conclusion yet, right? Why? I know some people will say, hooray, and just walk away. I got it, and walk away. No, no, you didn't get it. Uh, what you... You just found the present value of annuity, but you haven't answered the question yet. And what was the question? The question was, what's your decision? Do you take lump sum or do you take annuity? Huh? So now what, what do you say? Do you take lump sum or do you, do you take annuities? Anyone? Anyone? Is there anyone? I don't think you understand. I don't think you even, you know, even now. What was the, uh, what was the uh, uh, question? The question, you, you won the lottery, right? So, you have two options. One, Option number one, you take out lump sum. If you take out lump sum cash payout, it's six six million. If you uh, the set option number two, annuity. But if you take annuity, right? If you take annuity, um, no um, uh, it's the present value. All those annuities are only 3.335 million, right? Then in that case, and uh, we need to uh, look. Decision criteria is what did why did we find the present value of annuities? Because um, that way we can compare this six million with this present value of annuity. So now this time, the present value of annuities are smaller. So then, the decision is. Uh, your decision is quite obvious. You will have to take the uh, lump sum, not the annuities. Right? Previously, you couldn't compare these. Uh, you, you couldn't compare lump sum with annuities because they are apples and oranges. Now, this time, everything is apples. Both apple. This one is apple. Lump sum is apple. Present value of annuities is apple. Apple versus Apple. Now you can compare, right? So now it's lump sum. But then uh, you should understand. So everyone follows so far, right? Everyone is okay up to that point, yes. right? Yes. Okay, good, good. Yeah. And if you if you're not even you know up to this point, then you know um, I I just don't know uh, what more to do. Um, and uh, but you understand, it all depends on the discount rate. It all depends on the discount rate. If the discount rate is different, then it will, you will come to a different conclusion. So the next question is, um, uh, we don't, this is not a realistic interest rate, right? This is not a realistic interest rate. This is, more, the interest rate is more like, you know, 1%. Interest rate is like 1%. Uh, that's more realistic, right? Not even 1%, but 
since uh, so if we apply this, if you apply this, then what? Uh, I will drag it down. Oh, then uh, at 1% discount rate, the present value of these annuities will be greater than 6 million. And if that's the case, then you choose annuities, not lump sum. You will choose annuities. Now, uh, we were lucky in this uh, this time because uh, the annuities are 20K, but what if the annuities are 15K under the same scenario? Let's try that out, 6% or 1%, 30 years. Of course, it will be inferior to this result, isn't it right? because the numerator becomes smaller, it will clearly be inferior. Yes. Either way, you will choose lump sum. So you can say, uh, oh, in this day and age, you know, where when interest rate is so low, uh, it's always in your best interest to take the lump sum, right? Um, what about if, um, This goes to 45 years. Uh, this is not likely to happen. It's not going to happen, right? Why? Uh, uh, because generally, uh, as I said, what did I say? Actual, the real um, maturity of uh, annuities in lottery is 29 years, maximum of 29 years. Oh, another thing is, oh, uh, then why, uh, how do we know how much we will get? I mean, it, it, is the payment always, you know, uh, um, is the payment always like, you know, $20,000? No, no, look, uh, once again, you can solve this for payment. You can solve this equation for payment. Isn't that right? If you have a uh, target, uh, so think about it. Uh, the lottery uh, authority, right? It's, it's basically, you know, um, each state has, you know, uh, uh, gamble, game and gambling uh, authority or something like that. Uh, that's what, that's the, uh, uh, the public entity that, um, administers the uh, lottery. And then they can calculate uh, if the uh, lump sum is 6 million, based on the 6 million, they can calculate the payment, right? Just like we calculated payment for in, in, in future value of annuities, uh, we can reverse the process, right? Based on 6 million lump sum, they can uh, reverse engineer, right? Uh, to find the uh, payment. So it will, you know, um, it won't be more, right? Than uh, the lump sum in most cases. Uh, so then how do we find the uh, uh, present, uh, how do you solve that for, how do you solve that uh, for this present value of annuities formula for uh, payment? So let me use Let me use the whiteboard. Okay. So 
So present value of annuity. There are many variants of this formula, but this is the best variant. This is the best version. All the other variants are rather uh, you know, uh, all the other versions are rather, you know, um, uh, not very, you know, uh, not very uh, neat. It's just uh, too much, you know. Uh. Now, I can. This is this is not the sim simplified. This is not the most the sim most simplest version. This is not the simplest version. So we can simplify further. But then the simplified version doesn't look uh, uh, is not that. Uh, uh, convenient to use, but if I simplify, yeah, there's still room for simpl simplification. There's still room for further simplification. And why? Because there's a common factor. And what's the common factor? Actually, payment over R is the common factor. Isn't that right? We, we have payment over R here, payment over R here. It's like payment over R times 1 over one plus, right? In other words, um, this is like, ah. Uh, it's like, Right, you see, uh, it can be further broken down like this. And then you can see payment over R is the common factor, right? So if you factor out the common factor, then this term will be just one. And this term will be, this term will be just one over one plus R to the N. But I will factor out only payment. I'll factor out only payment because that way, it will make it easier for me to uh, uh, isolate only payment, which is what we want to know. If I factor out payment, the first term will be 1 over R. Second term will be 1 over 1 plus R to the N. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot about R here. Okay. Now then think about it. We can use these two fractions can be combined into one. Isn't it right? Uh, by finding the uh, largest common denominator or the greatest common denominator or, or, or uh, largest common multiplier. Um, in other words, this is like, where is it gone? This is like if you have one over two, 
minus 1 over 6, what do you do? You unify the, uh, uh, the denominator. Isn't that right? You can, make, uh, you can make this denominator 6 by multiplying by 6, uh, by multiplying it by 3. But whatever you do to the denominator, you must do the same thing to the numerator. So this one will become 3. And the second term, second numerator, will still remain 1. Make sense? Just like that. You can combine them. By unifying the denominator. And then this one becomes, this one becomes one plus r to the n minus one. Because the, uh, uh, the second term, second numerator, nothing needs to be done. Right? It was originally 1 over r times 1 plus r to the n. So nothing changes. This way, we have turned this formula into this format. And when, once it is in this format, now you see everything is now in uh, z equals x times y format. Isn't that right? You see? And how many times did I tell you? Right? Once we uh, identify that z equals x times y uh, structure, then we can Solve for x. X is over. So z divided by y, right? X is z divided by y. And we know uh, then the payment is And the payment is present value of a movie. Times, we all know, Multi uh, dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal, right? Reciprocal of that fraction. So we Okay, so this is how we find a payment. Okay, everyone is okay with that. So then, um, that. Going back to our Excel. Now, here's the um, 
Uh, that way we can also nail exactly, for example, if this is uh, 6 billion, right? Um, uh, let's try this. If the uh, uh, if your lump sum uh, in this lottery is six billion, what should be the uh, exact payment? Then all you need to do is this um, this times R times. One plus or to n open by open parenthesis one plus r raised to n minus one close parenthesis. Actually, that's that's a very good that's very good actually. <laughs> Um, this is ridiculous. For six million dollars, you're getting. Uh, you should actually get more, right? Uh, and uh, if one percent at one percent, uh, currently because our uh, currently uh, more realistic interest rate is one percent, uh, you'll get uh, almost. You know that's close to twenty k. That's close to twenty k. Um, so that 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 would be you know uh, if you win the lottery, uh, ten million dollar lottery. Um, either most likely you will get um, if you take lump sum six million. Uh, if you uh, choose annuities, you'll probably get somewhere around this, right? Like, you know, currently. Um, so lottery is not a very uh, practical example because you don't, you know, it's something that hardly happens in your life. But then, as I said, more practical example of present value of annuities is financing when you borrow money when you take out a loan and a lot of times you you know in your life there will be at least three or four occasions to take out a loan one if you buy a car two if you buy a house three a student loan four a business loan if you <clears throat> start up a, if you start a business so on the four, uh, these are four legitimate reasons to take out a loan. Otherwise, you know, loan just to uh, uh, just to spend, that's not a legitimate. That's not, you know. Um, okay. Uh, so our next example will be our next example. Uh, where is it? Our next example is car financing. All right. Well, we are out of time, so we're going to be talking about this in our next class, which will be our, uh, yeah, next Monday. Any questions so far? Any questions? Any questions? Hmm? Any questions so far? No. Um, okay. I have a question. Um, the quiz is this weekend, right? Yes, right. Quiz two. Okay. It's like. Yeah, second midterm. It's like second midterm, right? Please do. Okay, great. All right. All righty. So don't forget, it's going to start this uh, Friday. Okay. All righty, then. Have a great afternoon, everyone. I will see you guys. Thank you, Professor. All right. Take care, everyone. Take care, Tristan. I'll stop sharing.
uh, I'll stop and stop.